Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name's Corin Brad, and today I've got a demonstration for you to make a really handy small overnight bag. It's got a pocket at the front, it's got pockets at both sides, and when you open it up, it's fully lined with no visible seams on the inside. And the bag has a brilliant structure to it, which is basically um, Valiseline's Styleville Fix. And what that is, is a foam sheet, like this, that has a self-adhesive or a heat fusible self-adhesive side to it. So you can press your cotton fabric onto it and it just gives the bag a great deal of strength. So you could you can screw this bag up and then open it back out again and it's still got its structure. Now this isn't going to be a short video but it is going to be worth it. So if you've got half an hour to spare please sit back and watch and even if you then take it at your own pace stop the video to do the steps and then carry on you'll find yourself with a really neat handy bag and it's the kind of thing I've had this um, Amy Butler fabric knocking around for ages and never really known what to do with it and I'm so glad I've made a bag because it's beautiful so we will begin now as I say with this style um, Styleville fix it's a compressible foam sheet and you can feel and actually you can see which side has got the adhesive so before you start, just press your fabric with a dry iron and then lay it over the top. Start from the centre and rather than rub the iron, just tack it down to start with to make sure you don't get any wrinkles in that fabric. And then once you know it's tacked, you can give it a good press like you normally would. And this is on a medium to hot dry iron. And you don't need to iron it for ages, just long enough for it to stick. And if you pull it away while it's still hot, it will still pull away because the adhesive has then got to cool down to actually fix it. So with this bag, I will put a pattern template in the description below and I will show on you how many pieces of fabric of that size that you've got to cut. And I've designed this bag so you should be able to get it out of half a metre of Styleville Fix. And it's the perfect size not only to work on but to carry just things like a clean pair of pants, your contact lens solution, your hairbrush, you know, a clean shirt, what you need for an overnight stay. Each piece of the bag requires an outer, a lining and a layer of wadding. And the other thing that you will need is this stuff that's also from Belisaline, which is waist shaper. So it's for making waistbands. It's also great for making handbag straps. So again, just press your fabric so there's no wrinkles in it. Check which side has the adhesive. And as I say, you can see this because it's slightly shinier. And then lay your fabric onto your waist shaper. And then you fold in the edges and then fold it in half down that middle perforation and just clip those hemmed edges. And then we're going to sew down this side
and then to complete the strap just run down the other folded edge the same distance To make a really good solid but comfortable it's still flexible it's not going to hurt your hands and in fact what you need is, is two of these straps let me just uh, run an iron over this one because it's been folded up So make those first of all, because if you don't make them first of all, you'll forget that you need them. And then what you need to do for your next step is you need to sew your zip gusset. Now very simply again, you've got your style fix fused onto your fabric, you've got your lining and you'll need two of these pieces and you're going to fix them onto a zip like this. Now there's no end tabs on this zip because I'm going to come to them in a minute. But the way that you do this, let's turn it that way up because it's easier. Take your outer fabric and lay the right side of your outer fabric on the right side of the zip. And let's pin this. And then what you do is you lay your lining fabric on the wrong side of the zip. So the zip is sandwiched between the two. And I'm just going to repin that on the lining side of the fabric. And I find it much easier to pin the two pieces of material separately rather than trying to make sure that that zip is sandwiched properly. Once you become more experienced, you can do it, you know, sandwich it and pin the two pieces at the same time. But because I want this bag to be perfect, I want to check that I don't miss either of the layers of fabric in the stitching. So there you go. Right, so I want that. Now what you would normally do is you'd change your machine foot to a zipper foot. What you can do, if you have a machine with a movable needle, you can just move that across so that your foot doesn't hit or the, the left hand edge of your foot lines up to where your zip is. So we'll just stitch that. Oh, also what you need to remember to do, if you're gonna pin it in that fashion, is take the pin out the back before you run over it with your sewing machine. I'm paranoid now. I think there's more pins in the back of it. No, nope, that's fine. And when you get to the point where you have the pull of your zip, you are going to struggle to get a neat, even line around that pull. So if you leave your needle in the fabric, 
and then you just open that zip pull on the inside. You might just need to coax it under your machine foot. Rather than struggle with it like that, let's just lock that stitch off. Open it out and under the zip. There's nothing in the sewing rule book that, needs to, that, that says that your seam needs to be continuous. So you've now sewn your lining and your outer to the other edge of the zip. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to top stitch along the edge there. And what you'll find with this Starville fix is although it's quite padded, it really does compress well when you're sewing it. So there's your zip gusset, top stitched. What I'm also going to do is I'm just going to run a zigzag stitch along this raw edge. Really that's to make the assembly of the bag much, much easier. Um, what you'll notice is although my two pieces of fabric started out at the same size, this now looks shorter just purely because of the compression that you need on the foam. So I'm not going to pin it. All I'm just going to do is run a zigzag about a four by two and a half zigzag down this edge to bind these layers together. And you will find in places you will need to just pull that lining across to line up with the edge of the foam. But as long as you're not having to pull it across more than about five millimetres, it won't make any difference to the look of the bag. If you find with your seam allowances and the way that you've stitched it, you've got a massive difference in size, you would be better off just trimming the excess from your gusset. Because the way I've designed this bag is there is room for making things narrower. So that's that. And before I move on, what I need to do is I need to put my straps in place. And this is why I always say, make your straps first. Because it's one of those things you'll get carried away with your bag and then you'll completely forget what it was you were doing. So if you line up the ends of your zip, which is 50 centimeters, and you decide where you want to put your bag straps. Now I've put these uh, about 12 centimetres apart by the look of it. There's my centre point. So let's just put one here. Make sure it's not twisted. And put one here. And just tack them in place with a zigzag. A 
because once they're there, then you're not going to forget them. Let me just line this one up. And you can use your ready tacked handles as a guide to putting the other pair on in the same place. So there's the gusset and the handles and then what we're going to do is we're going to put the side panels on which are these pieces here which have a pocket. Now the way to do your pockets is like so. You'll need a padded piece for the main part of the pocket with a lining and you'll also, because I'm going to not the main part of the pocket this is the main back of the pocket this is the pocket part and instead of using the foam wadding I'm just using um, some Felicelines ordinary quilt wadding and I'm placing my right sides together fabrics over a layer of wadding and just stitching along one short edge. Open out the two fabrics and fold the outer fabric over the wadding so it's sandwich, the wadding is sandwiched between the two fabrics. and just top stitch again. So you've got a nice neat top to your pocket. Make sure that your layers of fabric are lined up and then place them so that the raw edges of the fabric line up at the bottom of this pocket back. And then just to be on the safe side, again, let's just zigzag stitch that. Oh, I've lost my foot pedal. And I'm also going to zigzag up each side. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm future proofing because by the time you get to the other parts of the bag, you're going to be sewing through several layers of fabric, several different components. And if you can make sure that everything is kind of welded together, it will make your life a lot easier. So we've got two pockets, we've got two linings. What you need to do is place a pocket Um, and you want to place it so it's about, the edge of it is about 10 mil from the end of your zip. Just going to pin that. A 
and you're going to sew this with a 5mm seam allowance. What you need to be careful of, or you may not, I mean if you're using a nylon zip it's not quite so bad, but this is a metal zip that I'm using. So when I get to the zip area, you'll see me be very careful in a minute. Oh, also, it helps a great deal if you put it back onto a straight stitch and not a zigzag. Let's try that again. managed to bypass that zip. So when it opens out, it's covering those ends. And then what I'm going to do is put the lining on the reverse. And I'm actually going to re-sew it five mil in from my original line. Now, what you can do is, as I said before, you can do your linings and your outers, sew them together with things sandwiched in between them. But I know from experience that, especially when I'm doing a demonstration, things can shift under your presser foot without you knowing them. And this is where I'm just going to be really careful because there's the centre of my zip and I don't want to break my needle. So yeah, I've managed to avoid that. So now when I open it out, you have your lining and your pocket and it's completely enclosed the end of that zip gusset. Now I'm going to do the same on the other side and then also what I'm going to go back and do is just zigzag round the lining to weld it in place again. So come back to me in a second. So I'm just coming to the last edge of the zigzag. And say all that extra stitching might seem a little bit over the top but there's a really good reason for it and the really good reason is coming up in a minute because what you need to do is you need to sew your bag front and back to these gussets and the less you have to worry about your layers of fabric moving around the easier it is so with the bag front and backs you want two outers and two linings. So here's one. And here's the other. But what I have done with the outer on one side is I have made another pocket in exactly the same way as we made the pockets here. So you've got right sides together, fabric and lining, layered onto wadding, sewn along the top edge, opened out and top stitched. And then I'm just going to tack these to the front of the bag. I say these, it's actually a this because there's only one pocket. And then also what you can do at this point, if you don't want one big wide pocket at the front, you can section it just by running a line of straight stitch right down your bag and when you get to the top of the pocket just go backwards and forwards on it a couple of times before you cut your thread because where it is on the stress point, you don't want that pocket to come undone. So you could pop your mobile phone in one side and travel documentation in the other, that kind of thing. Now this is the bit that gets interesting because what we're going to do is we're going to find the centre of our bag 
easiest way to do this is to line up those two seams of that pocket, find the centre of the bag and pop a pin in it. And then making sure that your handles are on the inside, you also want to fold this in half and find the centre, which is there. This is getting quite unwieldy now because it's so long. But if you line up those two centre marks and pin it, and then what you're going to do is you're going to sew your gussets all around the edges of your bag. And what you need to do is you also need your lining on top. Now because of all the reasons I've explained previously, I'm going to do this as two separate parts. And if this is the first time you're making a bag, I would thoroughly recommend you do it as two separate parts again. It's more stitching, it's more time consuming, but you get a better end result because the time that you can save not having to unpick your work because you haven't done it properly is invaluable. So I'm not going to pin this all the way around and I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to leave the bag front flat and I'm going to manipulate the gusset. What I've done on this bag is I've made these curves shallow enough that you haven't really got a tricky corner to negotiate. You've just got a gentle curve and it's very easy just to bend your gusset fabric in line. And you'll notice I've got an overhang here. I've done this deliberately because so many times I've made something and I've not quite got it in the centre and then it's short on one end and long on another. So what I've done is I've made the gusset deliberately about a centimetre longer than it needs to be so that when we get to the end we can just cut off the excess because it's much easier to cut fabric away than it is to try and add it on afterwards. Again, I'm starting from the middle out to make sure that everything's level. And it's slightly trickier to do it this way because you're having to bend your gusset underneath your curved piece of fabric. But just do it three stitches at a time. Leave the needle in the work and just twist it slightly. So effectively you've sewn your curved bag front to your gusset. Just pop that back in again. Because now what you need to do is you need to sew your lining in the same place. So, what you should be able to do now is just actually fold this, mitre this in. And actually, if you mitre it in and pin it, keeps it out of the way. This is why my pins have always got bends in them, because I try and poke them through far too many layers of fabric at the same time. And I'm going to start this because I know my lining and my inner, my lining and my outer 
are exactly the same size. I'm just going to pin this all the way around. So again what you're doing is you're sandwiching the majority of the bag in between the next two pieces of fabric so that when you open it out all of your seams are hidden. I'm sorry for the really boring pinning part of this but it is essential that you pin properly. Check everything's flat and then I'm going to sew this seam. So essentially I'm mirroring the initial seam that I've done. But I'm going to sew it with a slightly bigger seam allowance so it catches that first seam in it so that that's not seen. Just take care on that corner. Make sure you're flattening down that Starville fix. And the other advantage to sewing this many seams on one area is where your handles are attached, they're never going to fall off. So there you go. So now what you can do is turn this bit inside out like so. So your bag is sewn all the way around there, but also on the inside, I mean to be honest, if your zip wasn't the wrong way around, it would virtually be reversible. Now if you thought that was tricky, you've got to do the same on the other side. So turn your bag kind of inside out, and again, find your centre point. And your centre point is there. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run down one side and then the other for this bit. It is virtually impossible, I mean it's not impossible, it's a lot easier to do it one, side, one piece at a time, outer first and then lining. Because not only is it quite frustrating, the other thing is, is you would have to bunch this bag up to get the lining on the other side and then I think that would just get in the way of the camera so you wouldn't even be able to see what I was doing. So we'll just lock that in a minute. Take that pin out before I run over it. And again, do exactly the same thing. Run down this side. And while you're doing this, just check that your straps in here aren't getting caught up.
So that's one side. And then again, we'll do the other side. And if you're confident, you can, you can pin the whole thing around and just sew it on the one side. But I find if I've ever messed up with my pinning, it's always on a curve. So what I'd rather do is start from the middle and work out in both directions. Because then any mistakes I've made with easing the fabric get evened out. And it takes a bit longer. But, but I would say realistically, if you're making this bag from scratch on your own, you're looking at about three hours, I would think. By the time you've cut your fabric, fused it, pinned it, but it's worth it. Well, I hope you think it's worth it. So if you thought that bit was tricky, you've then got to sew this to the lining side. And what you've got to do is stuff that whole bag inside there as you're doing so. So again, I'll start at the end. And I'm not gonna pin this all the way around. I'm going to pin a bit, sew a bit, pin a bit, sew a bit, and you'll see why, because you have got quite a lot of bulk in there now. So we'll just get it up to that first curve. And again, so you're sewing lining to lining but you're mirroring that seam that you've just done, but you're just making it slightly bigger. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because you're gonna reach a point where you're actually gonna to have to tug this fabric quite forcefully and if you've just pinned it, you don't want your pins coming out or, or shifting. I'm just going to stop that there. And then I'm going to stuff this bit down here so that I can then carry on and do the next area that I need to sew. Once you get up to the top straight edge, it's a lot easier, but it's the getting there that you need to, to do to start with. Also, you need to find your foot foot pedal. So you can see what I mean about tugging your fabric. But provided you've cut your pattern pieces accurately in the first place, and in all honesty, if you've, if you've got the workspace and you're able to cut your pattern pieces in layers so they're all exactly the same shape and size, you can be confident that as long as you're matching up those raw edges, it's going to fit. Last 
a little bit. Bit of tugging. Of course, what you could do, actually, to make your life much easier is to hand tack these seams before you sew them. But now, hopefully, when I turn this the right way round, you've got your bag. which is now fully lined except the bottom. So, the bottom's the fun bit. Turn your bag completely inside out. And just zigzag stitch again. The bottom of your lining to the bottom of your outer. find, as I have here, that for some reason now your lining fabric is slightly longer than your outer fabric, mainly because you did pull it a little bit too hard. Don't worry too much. It's on the inside, no one's going to notice. But still zigzag it in line with the outer. And then this is the point where you've got that excess fabric on the ends of the gusset. If you just stitch, zigzag stitch across there, to the other side of the bag, and the same on this side. Then what you can do is just take your scissors, if you can find, oh there they are. Take your scissors and trim off that excess now. Because to put the bottom on your bag, you really want as flat an area as possible. Now in all honesty, because I'm doing this speedily, that shouldn't have happened, but it has happened. But I just want to show you that it's not an insurmountable problem. If you've come this far and something like this happens and you think, oh, why doesn't it fit? Don't take it all apart, unless it's really massively, you know, you've got three inches hanging off the end. You can trim up that bottom and it's still a straight line. Right, so, for the base, I've got my lining and I've got my outer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck the outer inside. And I've left, I would say, there's probably about an inch seam allowance on this. So where you've got your seam here, your outer wants to be one centimetre past that seam. And again on the other side, one centimetre past that seam. Because you're going to sew across, but you're going to only sew up to that seam. Now what you do want to do, and you can this time actually sew 
the lining and the outer at the same time. But what you will need to do is remember that you should have put your iron on a couple of minutes ago. With your lining fabric, you just want to turn in about six mil on one long edge. Just finger press that and give it a, a proper press. And also what I'm going to do, and if you've watched any of my other demonstrations, you'll know I frequently use paper glue on fabric. Just a little tiny bit, just to keep that tacked down. Because this is the one part of the bag that you will need to hand sew at the very end. Don't stick it down right at the edges. Don't be tempted to put so little glue on it that it doesn't stick at all. But you're going to need to get that whole corner seam there. Is my glue just not working because it's so warm today? Right, there you go. And then again, you want to pin this. So you, you've pinned your the bottom of your bag right sides together with the side of the bag here. So you want to pin this outer and make sure your hemmed edge is a face, the hem is facing up and that's not the edge that you're pinning because you're going to pin Before you go any further, remember to take those pins out that you put in originally. And the other thing I would recommend as well, just to give yourself a little bit more wiggle room, is take your accessory drawer off so that you can slide your bag right into the machine and then begin at the pin on the seam and again Remember to put your machine back to a straight stitch from a zigzag. Every time. And sew up to that pin because that's where this horizontal seam is. Well, vertical if you're actually looking at it as a handbag. So you've got your base and your lining so that when the bag is turned the right way out, the base, the, the outer fabric is on the outside. So then what you need to do, seems to spend my whole life going, then what you need to do is you need to sew these short ends to these side pieces. Now again, it's one of those things, I have cut the pattern pieces so that you have some leeway. It would also help if I'd actually sewn all the way up to that seam that I was talking about, wouldn't it? Yeah, and again, what I've done with the base piece, the measurements of the base piece, I have probably put about a one centimetre tolerance in there, so that if you haven't lined it up quite correctly, it's not going to be the end of the world. 
so then right sides together and pull that corner out so that this sits properly against it. And then if you're going to do both bits together, this is where it gets some um, I'm not going to say impossible because it's not impossible but you do need to shift your fabric about a bit do you know what let's not do it that way because it's too tricky it's just easier to do one side at a time again And I'm just going to start, you can't see that can you, I'm going to start a couple of centimetres down from that corner just to sew this in place and the reason being it's going to be much easier to see where that corner is on the other side of the fabric but let's just get this tacked in place. And then I can flip it over and again sew right up to that seam right now what you can do is you can kind of squish that in a bit technical sewing term that take your lining fabric this process does look so much worse than it actually is when you're physically doing this the great thing about fabric is it's got a certain degree of stretch you know you can pull it around and even if you think oh that's never going to fit you, you can stretch it to fit find that although that looks like the messiest corner ever by the time you turn that out and you've time you've turned it out this way because of the wadding it actually forms quite a neat corner so we're going to do the same with the other side if I can remember which way I need my fabric and as I say, with this one, because I have left you an excess on the pattern pieces, I shall sew this bit and then I shall trim it off before I sew the lining on. And at this point you're going through quite a few layers of fabric or it seems like quite a few layers because of the bulk of the foam wadding but it stitches like you can stitch through it like butter it really doesn't offer any resistance to your needle let's trim that bit off Manipulate this corner around here. 
and essentially because the lining and the outer were cut to the same size you will find that your lining fabric I feel like I'm wrestling a bear your lining fabric will be slightly longer than your outer so pin it in place check that it's square do you know what before we don't pin it in place cut the excess off before you pin it and then you can see what you're doing There you go. So that is the majority of your bottom sewn in place. All you need to now do, all you need to now do, is take the bottom of your bag. and pin the right sides together I don't know if you put the pins in the way the sewing machine is going to be directed, wouldn't it? And actually at this point what I would do, would I turn it, no I'm not going to turn it inside out, what I am going to do is I'm just going to try and pop that lining out of the way so that it doesn't get caught up. Just check every now and again underneath your work that nothing's caught up in there. vertical seam like so so that then what you can do is your hemmed edge here you can simply bring that hemmed edge over to that line of stitching and you can slip stitch it in place now anybody that's ever watched me trying to thread a hand needle and sew quickly knows that I'm not going to do that now. Knows that I'm just going to pin this in place. I will do it when I get home because I'm going to use this bag. Just going to pin that in place so that you can see that everything is enclosed and this seam will be enclosed. All you need to take care of on the corner 
is that you mitre that corner in so that you can make a neat, I don't know if you can see that in the overhead camera, you can just make a neat fold at the corner. And I don't know a better way of doing a fully lined, fully lined, a fully lined bag like this, or than this, um, because there's always going to be one seam that you're going to have to hand sew, whether you want to or not. So yeah, you would just over sew that seam, I would believe. I, well, over sew it, mattress stitch it, and then you can just turn your bag the right way round. Just push out your corners. Flip in your gusset. Flip it up, and there you've got it. A really neat, handy sized and very tidy way of making a bag. And as I say, the, the foam fusible lining, the, the Star, Starville um, fix, um, I'll put some details in the description below, along with the pattern template, which essentially will be this, maybe without the tape on it, and a series of rectangles because that's all it is, it's just one curved shape and then the rest of it's rectangles. You need a 50 inch zip with it. You also need some of this waist shaper, um, which comes in a packet that looks like this. And about half a meter of full width style of fix. And, and there you go. As I say, I reckon it will take you probably three, maybe four hours to make this bag yourself, if you include cutting all the pieces, fusing it all together, and doing the double seams like I have. So you're doing the outer first, and then when you know that's in the right place, then putting the lining in. Um, if you're a more experienced sewer, you can give it a go doing it all at the same time, but take it from me, you're better off using a little bit more cotton and saving a hell of a lot more time. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope. It's not been too long for you. It's something a little bit different because we don't normally do demos this long, but this bag is so nice and the, the, the materials used in it make such a good looking bag. It's worth doing. So I hope you will come back and see us again very, very soon. Uh, until then, keep safe and thank you very much for watching. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.